Hey, it's Corey from First Line, and today we're going to talk about the BabyPod 20. The BabyPod 20 is an infant transport device that will work across all modes of medical transport. The story behind this device is that a group of folks over in England were starting to see problems with infants being transported inside ambulances that were then being involved in crashes. And a fairly minor crash could actually turn the very large and very heavy isolate that was being used at the time to transport infants into a very heavy missile inside the back of the ambulance, not only injuring the patient, but also injuring the caregivers and even family members who were also in the back of the ambulance. So these folks at Williams Engineering who designed race cars decided that there had to be a better way. And they actually took Formula One technology, this monocue design, scaled it down and applied it to transporting an infant. The concept was is that there's essentially a very, very strong pod around the driver in a Formula One car. So even when they're involved in very serious crashes, often they walk away because they're protected by that pod. And this is no different. Okay, so the Baby Pod 20 has a number of different features to help restrain the child within the carbon fiber outer pod. First, we have padding all the way around. This padding is completely washable. It can be wiped down with whatever disinfectant after use. It just snaps in and out of the pod. This provides like the outer layer of protection in a, in a crash, and it also insulates the child from uh, vibration. Um, next, we have a vacuum mattress. Now, the way this vacuum mattress works is it's kind of like an air cast. You take the provided pump and apply, swaddle the child in the vacuum mattress and then apply suction to the mattress itself. And that will make a rigid yet soft cocoon that keeps the child in position and provides an extra layer of protection. Um, next, we have straps which thread through the vacuum mattress. Now these straps are connected directly to the uh, structure of the baby pod, but the primary purpose of these straps are not to really restrain the child. The purpose of these straps is to simply keep them in position with a little bit of leeway and a little bit of give. That way if there is a crash, it's not a sudden jarring impact. And then finally, underneath the child, we have a transformer, and the transformer is a single use heating element, snap the uh, little cylinder inside and it causes a chemical reaction that provides gentle heat and these transformers generally last for about four hours. It has a soft skin contact safe surface that the child is put on and this actually provides another layer of cushioning of an actual mattress effect that the child lays on during transport. Now moving to the outside of the baby pod, first the lid. So this is the one thing people sometimes get tricked up about. To unlatch the lid, you need to take a little bit of pressure off by pushing towards the head side, lift the latch, and then slide all the way back. Once the lid is out of this locking groove, it can be lifted up and you can access the patient. Now, do not transport the child with the lid open the lid is part of the protection of the baby pod. So during transport, the lid needs to be closed and latched. However, if you need still to have access, there's a small window, small sliding window, where you can access the patient during transport without having to open the lid. Okay, so we have a inlet port. This can be used to supply oxygen, but more often a simple airflow is required. Uh, it uses the Venturi effect to actually draw CO2 out of the baby pod. We've actually found that since this is not an airtight environment, that it's really not necessary to do that, but it is an option if you want to manage CO2 within the device. And then you also have the straps. So the straps are a 20G aircraft style uh, buckle. These are used to attach the baby pod. It can be used to attach it to a Ferno litter or a striker cart inside the ambulance. That's the preferred way to carry it inside a ground ambulance. They can be strapped or buckled into an aircraft. They can even be strapped to a spine board or a patient transfer board for a hospital evacuation or any sort of evacuation. And they can even be crossed and looped over your head to actually hand carry the baby pod. This is very useful when transferring from a 
a ground ambulance to a helicopter and when you need to cross you know rough terrain or wet terrain it's very difficult to wheel a cart often carrying it a single person can carry it is very important now the straps have a very simple buckle and release uh, they are adjustable and you can even thread a standard seatbelt buckle onto them and they can secure themselves under the bench seat of an ambulance. There's three straps, a pair that go across the unit and that's to connect it to the stretcher. And then there's one foot side uh, at the end of the unit, at the foot end of the unit uh, to keep it in place in, in the case of a frontal or rear impact. So that's the BabyPod 20. If you have any questions about this device or anything else, feel free to contact us at training at firstlinetech.com or leave a comment in the comment section down below.